Hi everybody, uh, in this uh, video I'm going to show you how we got to the, basically the bare plywood to the, uh, where we are right now, so hopefully uh, you'll follow along with my misadventures. So I'm not going to rehash um, all the video, again, uh, you can watch his video. Uh, I'm using scrap foam, not using the same type of foam he is, you know, I'm just a uh, using what I have left over. Uh, what I use to glue it down with, believe it or not, you know, I just use this wood glue. <laughs> I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's uh, it's not coming up. So uh, it doesn't eat into the foam. So, um, you know, I, it's what I used uh, before and probably what I use again. It's pretty cheap. So after I got, uh, I glued the foam down and I've determined the angle. I set the bridge down and again, following his lead, I sort of drew out around the uh, where the bridge feet are going to be. Uh, and if you watch the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, he cuts his phone with a hot, you know, hot wire foam cutter or something. Uh, pretty sure he gets a lot of. Uh, <laughs> Commissions. I mean, he's got a million subscribers, so when he names something, a lot of people are getting exposure to it. Um, I don't think I'm getting paid for anything. But if uh, if Erwin wants to give me a kickback because I use their uh, drywall saw to cut my foam, uh, I appreciate it, Erwin. Uh, I'll give you my uh, PayPal account. You can just deposit it right in there. Um, but the drywall saw worked fine, obviously. I left it like this because it's it's messy. Foam cutter doesn't have any mess. Um, so I cut around this with a just a big brazier knife, you know, a utility knife. And I, this isn't going to be completely dead straight like that. You know, I'm going to you know carve it out, undulate it a little bit, and back in the back back too. I'll do that. Uh, Again, that kind of stuff's probably easier to do with the foam cutter than it is with the knife. But uh, I'll, I'll get my shop back out after I cut this side over here. And I will uh, uh, clean all this up and I'll make some indentations and stuff like that. And uh, then I'll work on putting the abutments in. I am going to raise the track on the elevated road bed just like he did. Uh, just to experiment. I may do that. On the other layout too so um, that's where I'm at right now I said I wasn't going to get too much into the step-by-step uh, -step because you can get that from watching the other video um, what I did was I am going to have my embankment raised up so I did have my road bed cut out here uh, got the abutment sort of in place sort of lined up with the I am going to yeah, make it flush there. And we'll glue those down. Same thing on the other side. Now because my abutments are so big and this thing I made pretty small, uh, this is going to be the front. I decided this is going to be the front over here. But if you noticed, the tip is probably going to come really close to sticking out. On the back side, it's definitely going to stick out, so I'm going to I'm going to cut it off. Again, it's just a scenery display module, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down, and uh, then I will show you uh, how he cuts the abutments, how to fit them in place. Well, the uh, foam bed is drying with the weights on it. Uh, I've got this file where it has a rasp on it and I just took it down to sort of make this um, you know sort of uneven of course you don't want it to be perfectly sloped this side already was a little uneven but this side over here was pretty even so you can see I've sort of put some undulations in it and everything of course it's all going to be covered up with plaster or drywall compound whatever it is I decide to use but uh, uh, I'll show you how I did that all right Looks good. That's something I forgot. Luke's model is an HO scale. Mine's an N scale. So I think our foam was about the same thickness. Just visually, it looks about the same. 
But then scale, that's really twice as much as is an HO scale. We'll go ahead and do it this way, but I may have to patch in little pieces of foam here to make that uh, not such a steep uh, angle down. Uh, it's all going to be covered with plaster or some type of, you know, drywall mud or something anyhow. Uh, so it's not that big a deal, but uh, uh, really this should have only been about half the thickness for this uh, road bed, I think. So here's another tip. Um, I don't consider myself to be spatially challenged. I mean, like most people, if I'm laying underneath my truck and I'm looking at a wrench upside down... <laughs> uh, righty tighty lefty loosey sometimes it doesn't does it work when you, you have to really think about it uh, for a minute uh, but for some reason I was trying to make my road bed the same height as the bridge support and the track has to be up here that's just where the feet for the bridge sit so I'm uh, three quarters of an inch shy right here uh, so I'm <laughs> going to have to put some more foam in there. Um, but I've got them cut in. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, again, I'm not the expert at it. Uh, my first attempt, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, everything's level and square, so that's the main thing. Uh, you can cover up a lot of stuff with plaster. Uh, at least I hope you can, because I've never really used plaster much. I've uh, used foam and... You know, the layout I have now is basically dead flat. <laughs> so I'm hoping I can I get sculpt a mold or plaster or something and fill in some of this stuff. Um, but I'm making progress and I'm learning a lot, uh, which hopefully I won't repeat on the bridge on my layout. It's uh, Saturday night. This is where I am on the module right now. I've been working on the bridge rails put those on that's a kind of tedious job and uh, told you this is the back of the module but I did put that uh, like stand where they put the water barrels at uh, put one of those on um, I think for a bridge this long and a steel bridge they might only had one on there I'm not gonna overdo it uh, I'm just gonna put the one on there and I'm not gonna put a water barrel because I'm not on the you know, around 1980 or so, and actually, I might. That's right, I'm going to put a steam engine on it, so <laughs> I probably will put a water barrel on there. I forgot that uh, I was going to like get a steam engine and sort of stage a train on this, or a few cars, anyhow. Um, everything's coming along pretty well. Uh, again, I had to uh, take some foam core and take four pieces uh Luke talks about in his video how when he made, made the abutments, he used foam core and he soaked the foam core in water and just 10 to 15 seconds, the paper comes off of it. And you're just left with the, the, the foam and that's what I did. Uh, it's really, really easy to do and I just stacked up the, the pieces till I, I made up my road bed. So I've got this side pretty well contoured. It's almost ready for the uh, sculpt -a mold. Uh, the other side, still have a little bit of work to do on that. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I'm going to be putting sculpt mold on this whole thing, which will be an experience for me because I've never used this stuff. I've never used any type of plaster. I've used like drywall mud <laughs> in the past to do stuff. Never never mixed up plaster and used for anything. So uh, it'll be an experience uh, for me. Um, but I'll probably get that... Uh, that done and sort of show you what it looks like while it's drying and then maybe I'll, I'll post the video but that uh, everything's coming along pretty well so far you know I mean I'm not uh, the precision modeler I, when I cut that cut this foam out for the butt man so I cut it out too big and I'm having to fill in some gaps and stuff but you know plaster covers everything so I think it'll be okay Not cheat uh, one last video before I start covering it with plaster. Again, Aiden here at North Fork Southern. <laughs> uh, Sundays aren't slow days around here. There's 30 trains a day, no matter what day it is. Um, 
again this isn't a how-to thing so I'm not going to really film me putting the plaster on I keep saying watch Luke Tillman if you want to do it how to uh, so I'm just going to show you this and then I'll show you what it's like uh, when it's done again I've never done this before hopefully I don't get plaster all over everything um, I did go ahead and finish my track up to the end of course I'll have to put the ties in the gap there when I get done and you can sort of see the hopefully I can't get my the bridge rails uh, that I got done last night so I'll start working on the plaster and I'll show you how it looks later today well, here's the results my first experience with sculpt mold I just put it on my hand and glomped it on and I dipped my hand in water and tried to smooth it out some um, did it outside in the driveway and it's a bright sunny day as you can tell and I think it started drying faster like right in here I just really couldn't hardly get that to, to smooth out much but it'll be okay uh, where it's at tried to get the riverbank or the river bed fairly smooth but I'll, I'll sand that I guess when it's all dry um, it was fun <laughs> it's a learning experience uh, if I do it inside uh, man, I'm gonna have to put a lot of tarps down because I got it on my chain. I'm glad I changed my shoes. I got some new shoes yesterday. I changed those out, put on my grass mowing shoes, and glad I did because I got it all over the place. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, have any tips on how to use this stuff or comments? Uh, you know, let me down know down below if um, if you're enjoying this <laughs> my adventures. Uh, you know hit the like button and and subscribe if you want to I mean I'll have a variety of videos can't say it's all gonna be in scale but uh, but uh, I thank all my current subscribers and the really great community we've got here everybody stay safe